Welcome to another Picture Descriptions lesson. Today I'm going to describe various pictures of cities. So I'm going to use lots of common expressions and vocabulary related to cities. So I want you to look at the picture and listen to me describe each one and start to notice some of the vocabulary that I use which is related to cities. And after I describe each picture, I'll explain a couple of the words and phrases that I used. So let's have a look. Remember, you can always look at the subtitles as well so that you can follow exactly what I'm saying during the description. So let's look at the first picture. Wow. This is a beautiful Paris nightscape. The Eiffel Tower dominates the scene and the famous tree-lined boulevards of Paris can be seen stretching through the city. In the background, the financial district's tall towers are visible. The contrast of old and modern is clear to see in this shot. Okay, did you catch all the vocabulary and expressions I used related to cities and cityscapes? The first expression I'd like to point out is tree-lined. So tree-lined means a road or a boulevard which is lined with trees. Lined means all along the edge there are trees, okay? So usually we say tree-lined avenues or tree-lined boulevards. A boulevard is a particular kind of wide road, especially in Paris. We use this word when the road is particularly wide and especially a road which is lined with trees. Usually they're very long and straight as well. So this is a tree-lined boulevard. The next word I want to focus on is the word shot. Now this is not necessarily related to cities, but it's related to a picture. So a shot is a picture of something, a photograph. It's very informal, actually. We use this word just informally to say, let me take a shot of this scene, or let's take a quick shot of this beautiful building. Instead of saying photo or photograph, just say shot. So we use it as a noun. This is a beautiful shot, okay? Now, let's move on to the second picture. What an amazing shot of Moscow. The palace and the clouds are reflected in the glistening river and the distinct domes that are associated with Moscow can be seen in the background. This looks like the perfect scene for an artist to sit down and paint. So that was a beautiful shot of Moscow. The first word I want to look at is the word glistening. I said the palace and the clouds are reflected in the glistening river. So glistening means shiny, bright and twinkling, like sparkling, almost like a star in the sky. Now glistening collocates very, very well with river or lake or some other kind of body of water. So usually it's when the sun is shining or the moon is shining onto the river and it sparkles and shines. This is called glistening, okay? So we can say a glistening river or a glistening lake. Now, another word I want to look at is the word distinct, distinct. 
So I said the distinct domes that are associated with Moscow. Distinct means very, very unique and special. So we know as soon as we see those kind of domes, we know, aha, that's Moscow, that's Russia. So it's very, very distinct. We easily associate it with Moscow or Russia. Another example would be uh, Eastern architecture. So traditional Eastern architecture, for example, in China or Japan, is very, very distinct. So it's very, very unique compared to European architecture, for example. So distinct means unique and easy to identify as a particular type of something. Now let's look at the third picture. This is my city, London. The winding river Thames of London is famous for its bridges. The huge clock tower of Big Ben can be seen lit up, as can the giant ferris wheel, the London Eye, on the opposite side of the river. This contrast of classic and modern architecture typifies the London of today. So, the first word I want to bring your attention to is the word winding. So I said the winding river Thames of London. Now winding means moving in this pattern like a snake. Okay? We very often use this word with rivers. When a when a river passes through a city like in this shape, it's winding. So we can say a winding river. We can also use it as a verb. We can say the river Thames winds through London. Or we can even use the word snake as a verb. So we can say the River Thames snakes through London. Okay, so it means it moves in a very winding fashion. Now the next word I want you to focus on is the word typify. Typify. It's a verb and I used it in the last sentence. So I said this contrast of classic and modern architecture typifies London. So what does typify mean? Well, the word is related to typical. Typical. And typical means it's a very common example of something. A very usual example. A good representation of something. For example, pasta is a typical Italian meal. Typify, the verb, can be used to say this is typical of this situation or this place or this country. So the classic architecture and the modern architecture typifies the London of today. This contrast is typical of London. So London is a nice mix of old buildings and new buildings. Now the last photograph. This wonderful shot of New York sums up the city. Huge concrete skyscrapers dominate the skyline. The iconic Empire State Building rises high above all the others. I love the greyness of this picture. It represents the concrete jungle metropolises of the 20th century. So did you understand that description? I used many words related to cities and buildings as well. So the first word I want you to look at is the word iconic. This is related to the word icon, which means a symbol of something. So for example, Brad Pitt is a Hollywood icon. He's a symbol of Hollywood. When we think of Hollywood, we think of someone like Brad Pitt. 
He's very famous. He's appeared in many, many movies. So he is a Hollywood icon. So iconic is the adjective. So we can say the Empire State Building is iconic. It's an iconic building because it's appeared in many movies. Everyone knows it and it represents New York City. The Empire State Building is iconic. Now, the second uh, thing I'd like to focus on is the phrase concrete jungle. So this is a nice phrase. So I said uh, it represents the concrete jungle. Now, concrete jungle is sometimes a term we use to say the city is just full of concrete and actually it's quite ugly. But in the case of New York, it's actually a good thing. We don't mean to represent an ugly city. So New York has many, many uh, buildings from the previous century which were built using concrete rather than steel. So we can say it's a concrete jungle. So in the case of New York, we're not being offensive. But sometimes we use this term to say it's a horrible city just full of ugly concrete buildings. But of course, New York is different. It's full of beautiful skyscrapers, which are very, very iconic. For example, the Empire State Building. So if you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comments section below and make sure you hit the thumbs up button.